All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I guess we're gonna be getting on to part five of these line cooks tips and tricks. Uh, these are not in any particular order of importance. These are just, I'm, I'm trying to cover everything, man. I'm trying to cover from the most insignificant, like really gross way, you're gonna, you're gonna tell guys to pick everything up with a towel. I'm gonna fucking tell everyone to pick shit up with a towel. You know, it's not about whether it's common sense or not. It's not about whether you knew it or not. There's someone out there who's starting out and they don't know. And it might be obvious to you, but it's not obvious to them. And I, I'll do it. I'll be the one to let them know, hey, pick shit up with a dry towel. You know, assume that it's hot. Uh, we're trying something new out. Because fuck it. All right. So. Number one. You want to watch everyone, right? Whether you're in a new spot, it gets better as you stay in that spot. But once you start off, you want to watch everything. And I say this all the time. Like, even, like, the beginning of your stage, you ought to be paying attention, like, how does the chef conduct himself? What is the chef sous chef dynamic like? What's the kitchen dynamic like? Um, it's the little things you'll pick up little things like who works clean? Who's out there just, you know, looks lost. You can learn a lot of good shit. You can learn what to do. Maybe you're a bit, you've been having trouble and then you go in maybe what? Dude, sometimes you might go in like a few minutes early and you see the AM guy set up one little detail. That's all it takes. One little thing. You're like, fuck, dude, I like that idea. I'm going to adopt it. Or maybe you see something he's struggling with. And then maybe there's something that you're struggling with because you just notice it. You might say, hey, you know what? I'll do this for you at night if you just do this for me in the morning. And then, you know, we can help each other out. Take your time. As you progress, as you get better that skill will come back and help you out. So, you know, when I was being trained to do, to be the sous chef, you know, little things like I had to watch, you know, I had to watch over all the stations. Every time they'd open, I'd have to pay attention to see like, okay, are they low on something? Because if they're low on something, I want to go and get it before they're even thinking I need something. But day one, day zero, you know, your stage, watch how everyone works. Number two. Again, this is this is those things where it's like anyone would be like, oh yeah, this is fucking obvious, but it doesn't fucking matter. This is my bottle of water when I go to work. This is what I drink out of. It is 32 ounces. And I at least drink two of those a day. Um, the kitchen's hot. You're going to be sweating a lot. You're going to be doing a lot of movement. And it's very, very easy to forget to just stop and listen to your body. Drink plenty of water, please. Okay, stay hydrated. You know, 32 ounces, you ought to be downing two of these per shift. So that means on an eight hour shift, every four hours you should be downing one. And it's a piece of cake, especially when you're busting your ass. That's a simple one, but it's very important. Take care of yourself. No one is ever gonna care about you like you. Number three, 300. The last and final one I'm gonna leave you with is stay calm. And again, it doesn't, I feel like, I feel like some of the more advanced people might be like, the fuck, stay calm. Again, this is not, this is for day one, ground zero, nothing, nothing to base out of is stay calm. Look, no matter how much you get yelled at, no matter how much you're being talked to, talked down to, no matter what, you gotta stay fucking calm, okay? Getting frantic is not, you're not get, doing yourself any fucking favors by staying frantic. Don't do that, okay? Chill. What do you need to do? What is your focus right now? Keep it fucking simple, okay? I've had, she I've had chefs yell. I've had chefs know how to push me i have no chefs that don't know how to fucking push me it's easy to feel flustered 
when say you're behind on some orders. It's easy to feel stressed when the chef's telling you you need to hurry up and you're making mistakes or you know you're you're being a hindrance you know it's easy it, it, it's easy but it, it's an exercise it's like anything else it's something it's like a muscle you got to exercise it's you just have to be patient with yourself and you may not get it the first time but the advantages and the advantage that i'll say a lot of the times is that you get to come back the next day i mean hopefully hopefully it's not so toxic you just feel you can't stick around but Say if you're like a new environment and they're trying to pull you up to their standards, they're probably going to be a little hard on you in the beginning. They're probably going to be, I don't want to say impatient, because I think you can, you know, come on hard, come on strong, and it doesn't mean you're being impatient. You just know that the person is my, maybe he's doing things a little slow. Maybe they're being very stiff in the way they're working and you want them to be more fluid. Like, dude, come on, you can go faster than that. I know you can. Don't lie to me. Yeah, I, I'll sometimes tell that to like, come on, now. you can go a little fast. Don't, don't, don't lie. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you can't do it because I know you can. And they just need a little bit of that push, a little bit of encouragement, and everyone's a little different. You know, some people like that more. Some people are like, hey, let's try it this way. You know, that's what I don't know. It's my fucking face when it's like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Um,. But yeah, staying calm is super important. You can still move fast. You can still think fast. You can move with intention. But you got to stay calm, okay? You're not doing anyone favors by fucking freaking out on the line. You're not doing anyone fucking favors by just <laughs> panicking. Slow down. What are you working on? How many orders can you remember without any problems? Okay you'll get better you'll have tomorrow maybe today you weren't so hot okay cool maybe your chef can sit down and talk to you or the sous chef and be like hey you know i've had i've definitely i've had good chefs talk to me and they're very you know there's a lot of the good that good feedback what's going on and the the, the better they are the more they understand that it's all in here the more that they understand that it's almost like it's not about the job something else is going on maybe maybe you're having trouble with your girlfriend maybe you're dealing with some stuff at home maybe you're just dealing with a or maybe you just feel overwhelmed who knows a, but a good a good kitchen a good chef is going to hear you out and give you constructive criticism and it's not just going to blow it off as like well you need to fucking for your shit they'll say that but after they've given you some pretty good advice and i've and just the flip side i've had sous chefs that just but yeah, those were the four tips for the part five. Let's review it one more time. Watch everyone, okay? Don't just stay focused on what the fuck you're doing. Look around. Every once in a while, you're looking down. Look up what's going on. What's the dishwasher doing? What's what's your chef doing? What's the next person doing? Does someone need? Look around. Use your eyes and use your ears, okay? It's not just about what goes on, what goes on in here and what comes out. Uh-uh. Listen and watch. Okay. Number two, stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water, please. Drink your water. Three, double check, dude. One, two times, three times. Oh, I didn't mention that. Okay, okay. I didn't mention the double checking part. Yeah, you want to double check things. I remember I was doing, I forgot what it was called. Falafel? No, it's not falafel. One time we were doing falafels in, in the restaurant. And I followed it to a T, only to find out later that I had done it wrong because no one in the past five years took time to update the recipe book. So I ended up doing this in a long way that actually ended up wasting time and I had no idea and I got written up for that. So what it became a habit and I still do this. Like if there's a recipe, hey, go do this. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to go to a cook or I'm going to go whoever assigned it to me. The shoot from you like, okay, so it says I need this, 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 and that. Is there anything I need to know? No? Okay. Is there any? No? Okay, cool. It's as is. At the beginning, yes, they'll definitely, they definitely see me as like, you're being kind of fucking weird. It's straight fucking forward. Ah, uh, you would think that, but I've been in plenty of occasions where straight for fucking forward 
seems to just be like, the fuck are you talking about? So always double check. Okay. And then the last one, you know, stay calm. Be chill, dude. Okay. There's always tomorrow. Practice today. And if you didn't do so hot, cool. You'll be back the next day. Of course, this depends on how much you're willing to take. If you have such a low tolerance for stress, first off, if you have a very low stress tolerance, like things just get to you, I don't know what you're doing in the kitchen because the kitchen just in general is a high stress environment. I do believe it's one of the reasons that the it has its own culture, you know, because it does, the kitchen does allow for a certain amount of letting off the steam, you know, expressing frustration. It does have a certain amount of that. Even now, even in what I would call a very professional environment, there's a certain amount that you're allowed, you know, to express frustration because you're in a fucking tight knit place with everyone and fucking emotions are running high, orders are coming in, there's so much going on, everything's fucking loud. So yeah, for sure, it's a stressful environment. But learn to stay calm. You know, it's no different than like, I see these videos of like these Marines where they're just yelling, just insane yelling at recruits. But as I, as I watched it, I began to understand that it's like, you know, if you're in a war zone and you're trying to do something, those bullets, that those big loud sounds aren't going to stop for you, you know? So I can imagine maybe the first day, that's a lot to take in. But I think by like the third month, that yelling, it's like they can tune it out and do whatever it needs to do. That's just kind of the way I am, you know? If I get behind on something, I know exactly what I need to do. If I, if I need to do something like, shit, we're out of this and we need to go make it on the fly, I can do that. I've learned how to work with a sense of urgency without attaching, you know, franticness to it. I'm now attached calmness to it. I can work at a decent speed with a sense of urgency and I can still remain calm and be very chill. And you know what? Enough cooks have come and told me, like, dude, I really appreciate you that I was already stressing out. Chef was freaking out on me. And you really just came in and was like, no, nah, man, we're good. We're going to do this, this, and that. And we got it done. That's just the way I am. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed your part five. Got, I think these are pretty, four pretty solid tips and tricks. Sorry if this came off a little awkward. I've been off camera for a couple of days, so my groove is a little off. But I'll be seeing you next time for part six. Uh, I really appreciate your views. Leave a comment down below. Please hit the like button. Sub if you're watching. I can't. Last time I checked my analytics, 75% of you aren't even subbed and you guys are watching. Help me out. Just help me reach other people that might benefit from my videos. That's what it's all about. All right, guys. Have a great service, guys. Peace.